hi students so we will continue uh, the thermal properties of matter we are in thermal expansion so in thermal expansion we have seen the linear expansion aerial expansion then volumetric expansion we have seen its coefficients alpha beta and gamma and we have seen the relation like a beta is equal to 2 alpha gamma is equal to uh, 3 alpha okay so we have seen this relation also now apart from that we have got the ratio also alpha is to beta is to gamma this is equal to 1 is to 2 is to 3 so this is the ratio of alpha beta and gamma or we can say alpha by 1 is equal to beta by 2 is equal to gamma by 3 so these things this ratio or this one we can say this is valid for isotropic uh, solids what is isotropic solids isotropic solids means it has got same properties in different directions okay for isotropic isotropic solids or materials we can say generally we can say materials okay isotropic solids or materials okay because uh, this uh, volume expansion okay this happens in liquids also so it is not exclusively for solids okay uh, we can say this is for materials uh, lengthwise expansion lengthwise expansion we cannot say but uh, volume expansion is there for liquid in liquid also as well as in gas also but for alpha and beta we can say that is only for only in solids so for solids if we consider it has got same property everywhere okay in this direction in this direction every direction they are called isotropic solids or isotropic materials so isotropic means actually solid liquid gas everything has got isotropic okay but this ratio is valid for isotropic solids this is what i am telling okay please note it down okay then another set of relation is uh, beta is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus uh, uh, sorry alpha 1 plus alpha 2 and gamma is equal to alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 this is for anisotropic that is if the properties are different that is this expansion properties the coefficient of expansion is what is alpha beta gamma and all so if this alpha is different in different directions obviously we can say they are not isotropic their properties are different in that case we will have to consider beta as if we consider area alpha is alpha 1 is in one direction alpha alpha 2 is in another direction then beta can be taken as alpha 1 plus alpha 2 gamma is what coefficient for volume so alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 for anisotropic materials okay clear okay uh, another point which we need to discuss is regarding thermal stress and thermal strain thermal stress and thermal strain suppose if uh, these are two fixed uh, poles 
or pillar or whatever it may be they are fixed and we have connected a road we have connected a road we have connected a road okay in such a way that it just suits the distance between the poles or fixed supports okay fixed support now in this case suppose if we apply heat now what we are doing uh, we are supplying heat to this rod when we supply heat what will happen length will increase length will increase and definitely there will be force at this end and force at this end and in elasticity when we when we have studied the chapter elasticity you might be remembering suppose if we put any mass like this there will be mg acting in this direction there is going to be a force here also this string will apply a force at this support also but we have considered only while finding stress while finding stress we have considered only one force okay f divided by a so always we have considered only one force when we have studied stress so here also we are not going to consider two force at this ends we will be considering only one force okay now we are going to we are supplying heat what will happen to its length suppose if it's all the length okay all the length is l naught when we increased the temperature that is when we applied heat when we applied heat what happened this became what l so new length is l all the length is l naught into 1 plus alpha delta theta l is equal to l naught into 1 plus alpha delta theta okay so now if we take it inside l naught plus l naught alpha delta theta and l minus l naught is equal to l naught alpha delta theta this is actually change in length change in length if i bring here the original length then this is going to be what this is actually strain this is actually strain just because we are increasing the temperature by applying heat we can call this strain as thermal strain so thermal strain that is delta l by l naught this is actually what alpha delta theta alpha delta theta clear now we know young's modulus y is equal to what stress divided by strain okay and young's modulus is there for this material also so stress is equal to stress is equal to y into strain stress is equal to y into strain so what is this force by area is equal to y into strain force by area is equal to y into strain so overall the force experienced by this rod or experienced by this support is equal to what there we are getting strain y y into what is strain y alpha delta theta and this area if we put here this is going to be the force so force is equal to y alpha delta theta into area clear y alpha delta theta into area please copy this okay shall I raise this okay 
another important uh, thing uh, not a new concept but a type of uh, problems that we can expect in from this area thermal expansion of solid is uh, if we get a scale scale means uh, or measuring tape okay okay a measuring tape made of iron or a measuring scale made of iron okay something like that then if we apply heat to it okay if we increase the temperature obviously its dimension will change if we decrease the temperature or if we extract heat from it its dimension will decrease so we may have some material to measure then its true length measured length likewise there can be certain situations that we will see okay so error in measurement error in measurements suppose uh, this is a road this is a road and we have a scale okay we have a scale and this scale has got a measurement and this scale can measure up to 120 centimeter so this is 0 centimeter and from that the scale has got how much 120 centimeter length is there the original length of the scale is original length of the scale is what original length of the scale is of scale is 120 centimeter now suppose this rod this rod has got original length is equal to 100 centimeter okay this rod has got a length of 100 centimeter rod has got a length of 100 centimeter now suppose if we apply heat to this scale its length will increase so two so two situations we will have to see we will see that okay now first case is temperature is increased we are not increasing the temperature of this rod if we increase the temperature of this rod and if they are of same material then the measured length everything will be a uh, different case now what we are saying is we are increasing the temperature of the scale okay increasing the temperature of measuring tape i will say okay measuring tape measuring tape so now what will happen now its length is increased so this 100 centimeter will go somewhere else so measured length is going to be less this time so i could say if this uh, rod its actual length is 100 centimeter this length of the scale will increase because of the increase in temperature so what will happen when this 100 centimeter was the original length of this rod and if it is working at say for example 25 degrees celsius or some room temperature okay it's, it is working at room temperature of 25 degrees celsius so when the temperature is increased what will happen this 100 it, it, its length will increase and this 100 centimeter will shift to somewhere else so previously this was the 100 centimeter now it came to this position 100 centimeter 120 centimeter and 0 centimeter here okay clear or what so now measured length is what measured length is less measured length is actually less so measured length 
is less than the actual length of road measured length of road is less than the actual length of the road now uh, how can we find the actual length actual length is equal to measured length actual length actual length of the road is measured length plus the change in length of the tape so this is what the change in length this is actually delta l the changing length of the tape okay so this is the change in length of tape change in length of the tape so the measured length is now less act than the actual length so we will find actual length is equal to actual length of rod is equal to measured length okay i will erase this <coughs> actual length is equal to measured length plus delta l that is change in length of tape change in length of tape actual length is equal to actual length is equal to measured length plus here plus change in length of the tape okay clear now second case okay not it down now what we are going to do is we will decrease the temperature we will decrease the length of the uh, we will decrease the temperature of the measuring tape now what will happen to what will happen to the measuring tape okay so this is 100 cm now the length of the tape has come down okay length of the tape has come down this was the 100 centimeter actually this was the 100 centimeter when temperature is decreased the length of the tape is decreased now this 100 centimeter shifted inside somewhere here it came so now the case is measured length measured length is what less than the actual length so when we sorry the 100 centimeter shifted to this side so sorry what is happening now here we may get 110 115 or 105 so this time measured length is greater than the actual length okay so here this time we can say how much this 100 centimeter is shifted that is the change in length what was its original length so when to what extent it has shifted that is the change in length or simply we can say they may give in the question like a change in length of the uh, measuring tape is this much or we will have to find out with the given temperature like how much will be the change in temperature so here in this case actual length measured length is actually greater than the actual length measured length is greater than the actual length so in order to find the actual length what we need to do we will have to subtract the change in the length of the tape measured length is more this time okay how much more this much is it is more so that minus the change in the 
length of the tape then we will be getting the correct values clear not it now <coughs> clear okay okay next thing which we need to see is the we know length will change area will change volume will change and mass what will happen to mass mass will be same okay whether we change the states okay if we uh, increase the temperature or decrease the temperature mass will be constant so obviously mass is equal to volume into density so if volume is increasing density should decrease if volume is decreasing density should increase so that we will uh, see effect of effect of change in temperature in density effect of change in temperature in density okay so we are taking uh, m mass of anything okay something so its uh, initial volume is v1 its initial density is rho1 okay now what is what we are doing is we have increased the temperature we have increased the temperature what will happen the final volume will be v2 and final density is going to be rho 2 okay so whether uh, change in uh, it can be increase in temperature or decrease in temperature so what we will do let us make it in such a way that we will write delta theta okay so delta theta that is there is some change in temperature so we will get a common result okay so this is initial volume initial volume and density this is what final volume and density initial volume and density this is final volume and density so final volume v2 is equal to initial volume v1 into 1 plus gamma delta theta okay so that we can substitute here so mass m is equal to v1 rho1 is equal to what v1 into 1 plus gamma delta theta into what rho2 okay so we can say all the density rho1 is equal to what 1 plus alpha delta theta into rho 2 likewise we will have to take because v1 al, uh, rho 1 is equal to here it was v2 now we have substituted like a v1 into 1 plus gamma delta theta is it clear so now v1 and v1 we can cancel and we will be getting rho 1 is equal to 1 plus gamma delta theta into rho 2 so this is the initial density and this is the final density we need to understand what is the final density so let us make it in this way rho 2 is equal to rho 1 by 1 plus gamma delta theta we can write it like that now in order to put it in the uh, numerator we can write it this way rho 2 is equal to rho 1 into 1 plus gamma delta theta inverse okay so this is a relation this is a relation we can take one more relation from this this is one relation okay clear okay shall i erase this okay copy this we need one more we will get one more relation from this okay copy this 
pause the screen and copy it down. Okay, I am erasing. Okay, so row 2 is equal to row 1 divided by 1 plus gamma delta theta. Now I am multiplying this with 1 minus gamma delta theta divided by 1 minus gamma delta theta. Multiplying, multiplying and dividing with 1 minus gamma delta theta. So row 2 is equal to row 1 into 1 minus gamma delta theta here. This is like a plus b into a minus b. So a minus b all square. So I can write 1 minus gamma square delta theta. So here gamma square is what negligible. Gamma square is negligible. Gamma square is negligible. So this we can avoid. So rho 2 is equal to rho 1 into 1 minus gamma delta theta. Okay, so this is the relation. Clear? So either we can take in this way. All these are fine. Rho 2 is equal to rho 1 by 1 plus gamma delta theta or rho 2 is equal to rho 1 into 1 plus gamma delta theta inverse or otherwise rho 2 is equal to rho 1 into 1 minus gamma delta theta clear so the only difference please note it down so the only difference here it is uh, in length it was 1 plus alpha delta theta in area it was 1 plus beta delta theta in volume it was 1 plus gamma delta theta and in resistance if we see r into r naught into 1 plus again alpha delta theta that alpha is a co coefficient of resistance okay temperature coefficient of resistance only for density we will have to take 1 minus gamma delta theta so this gamma is the coefficient of volume expansion okay please note it down Okay, so these are the major concepts which we need to look uh, for thermal expansion in solids. Okay, so expansion is there in liquid also, so expansion is there in gas also. We have seen the thermal expansion in solids in the major case. Okay, and uh, slightly we have touched the thermal expansion of liquid gas also in thermometers, but we will have to see further certain things also in thermal expansion of liquids that we will see in the next session. So with this, the major concepts of thermal expansion of solids are done. Okay, now we will do its problems in another session. So uh, in this session, we are going to see uh, thermal expansion in liquids. Okay, from the chapter thermal properties of matter. Okay, thermal expansion in liquids. Okay, so here in order to handle this topic, we have to consider a liquid which is taken in a container. Okay, suppose if this is a container and the liquid is taken in this container. Okay, now when you apply heat, what will happen? There will be expansion for the liquid the volume of the liquid will change volume of liquid will expand volume of this container also will expand okay so if the volume of the container expands and liquid also will expand okay so how we can calculate the expansion for the liquid alone okay so here we need to understand that when you apply heat suppose if we apply heat okay what will happen this vessel or this container okay this will expand more compared to water 
okay so vessel will expand more compared to water because specific heat capacity there is a topic which we are going to study okay so uh, the uh, change in temperature okay change in temperature for a material will be different okay suppose if we apply heat certain things will have more difference in temperature with the less amount of heat certain materials if we apply more heat okay certain materials if we apply less heat also it will the change in temperature will be more certain materials even if we apply more heat the change in temperature will be less so even if we apply heat the change in temperature will make the effect of change in volume okay so based on all those properties right now what we need to understand is this vessel will expand more initially compared to the liquid after that this liquid will take some time it will take some time after that liquid also will expand okay so initially okay initially we can say this vessel expands more so what will happen initially there will be decrease there will be a reduction in the level of liquid okay so i am writing here initially the vessel expands more compared to liquid compared to liquid okay now this is just in uh, for some time it will be like this so i am writing here initially okay so initially this vessel will expand more so uh, liquid will not be expanding that much so the level of the liquid will come down but continuously we are supplying heat so finally what will happen finally what will happen this vessel also will expand and this liquid also will expand and expansion of liquid will cross the expansion of uh, this vessel and if we keep a small vessel here and if we collect this overflowing water we will have some water extra water in a small vessel what i am telling is the uh, first initially what will happen this vessel will expand this liquid will not be expanding that much so level will come down after that we are sub continuously supplying heat this will, liquid also will start expanding it will reach to the top level i mean uh, how much is the expansion of vessel that much will be the expansion of liquid also but again if you are supplying heat what can also happen this uh, some water will expand further and it will overflow from the vessel suppose if we collect that water here in, in some other vessel this is how it is clear so here the thing is some uh, for us like if we are looking from outside the visible expansion of liquid immediately how much liquid has expanded or how much volume is the new volume or how much volume extra volume has come immediately what will be our answer we will be saying how much we have collected that much is the expanded extra liquid if we do not know about this property and all okay if we do not know this property and all okay so this is called apparent this is called apparent change in volume okay apparent change in volume only that much we know actually liquid has expanded further because but the thing is the expansion of this vessel this expansion of this vessel uh, what happened it has nullified or it has covered the expansion of liquid okay say for example we can say suppose if this vessel is of one liter if this is of one liter now when we supplied heat when we supplied heat now the this vessel vessel volume became 1.25 liters 
okay this this was one liter this vessel was one liter same vessel when we applied heat the vessel's volume became 1.25 liters water level or liquid level came down again we are applying heat what happened okay so if this is of same volume this liquid also of what one liter okay liquid volume is also what one liter liquid volume is also what one liter now when the vessel volume became 1.25 liter say for example this liquid volume is 1.1 liter and since the volume of the vessel has increased this increase is not that equal to this much so water level came down now again what happened this vessel okay already this has expanded to 1.25 liters let us consider this as 1.25 liter but what has happened to the liquid liquid has expanded so obviously this is 1.25 liters and extra we have collected say for example if this is 1.25 liter 0.25 liter we can say that the visible change in volume for us visible change in volume or we can say the apparent change in volume is how much only 0.25 but the real change in volume is how much one liter was the volume of the liquid it became 1.25 liter so extra 0.25 is is it there inside now a 0.25 is there outside also so we can say from this example like uh, real change in volume okay real change in volume of liquid is how much 0.5 liter this 0.25 plus this 0.25 okay and apparent what about apparent or visible apparent change in volume of liquid is how much how much 0.25 liter okay is it clear okay so please note down this example and if necessary the explanation for you to remember okay so vessel liquid okay the vessel water we will take a vessel water one liter is the capacity of the vessel one liter is the volume of the water supplying heat vessel expanded initially water is slowly reacting to it so volume of the vessel became 1.25 liters volume of water became 1.1 liters but visibly for our eyes the level of the water came down again heat is always there then vessel volume stopped increasing it is at 1.25 liters but this water is expanding again and again again what happened water expanded to 1.5 1.5 so 0.25 is collected outside 0.25 is collected inside clear so this is the overflow liquid and this is the apparent change in the volume and real change in volume we know okay so we will have to deal this clear i think the idea the concept everything is clear now we will uh, go to the formula for handling the questions related to it So we could say suppose V naught V this is the initial volume of vessel initial volume of vessel this is same as initial volume of liquid okay so I am going to remove this v l and all and i am going to put v naught because we are going to take a vessel and water or liquid of same volume 
okay so initial volume of both vessel and initial volume of uh, uh, liquid both are same okay now another data is final volume of liquid final volume of liquid means there can be apparent and there can be real also so final volume of vessel is this v v final volume of vessel and v then real okay the for vessel okay final one only one change is there for liquid we need to find the apparent change in the volume also we need to find the real change in the volume also so the new volume of liquid that is real okay real final volume of liquid okay now apparent liquid okay apparent okay apparent change okay suppose uh, if we put here delta delta apparent liquid okay apparent change in volume of liquid okay now how to find the apparent change in the volume of liquid can i say this is the volume of liquid liquid overflow okay this is the volume of the liquid overflow okay so volume of the liquid overflow is what delta v apparent liquid clear this is same whatever we are collecting outside that is the apparent so what is that actually the apparent change in volume is equal to the real change in volume of liquid minus the real change in the volume of vessel is that okay apparent change in volume is vo total volume of the real change in the volume of the liquid how much is there or we can say the uh, volume final volume of the liquid real volume minus the volume of the vessel that is final because uh, how much really this water expands that is the total volume of the water how much is the final volume of the water how much is the final volume of the water which is there in the container and which is there outside okay final volume of the liquid whatever is there inside the container and whatever is there is the outside okay so i will show you this one is nothing but the small one how much is collected this much this is what the container full water plus whatever is collected inside correct or what minus this one this is what same these are same correct or what see apparent change in volume that is this is equal to the final volume of the liquid both together minus the volume of the vessel correct or what okay diagrammatically i am showing okay this is equal to this minus this is equal to what this one correct or what clear okay fine now shall we write the formula okay now what is the new volume what is the new volume of the liquid why i have written r there but that is a real volume real final volume okay this is equal to initial volume v naught this is same okay for v naught is same for initial volume is same for liquid this is same for vessel also 
so v naught into 1 plus what gamma of the liquid okay so here gamma of the liquid is enough for but for our understanding i am putting r also okay 1 plus gamma the coefficient of expansion of volume into delta theta is it fine the final volume of water is equal to initial volume of water into 1 plus gamma uh, gamma of the liquid into delta theta clear now what about this one <coughs> final volume of vessel is what again same v naught v naught is same initial volume of vessel and water both are same 1 plus gamma of vessel coefficient of volume expansion of the vessel into delta theta is it fine clear now we will put this here and we will find out the formula okay so shall i erase these things okay note it down note it down till this now i will be removing these part and all okay note all everything cleanly so that when i even after erasing when i substitute you will have proper clarity because this information should be there in your book clear pause the screen and note it down okay shall i erase fine okay so now what shall we do the apparent change in volume of the what in of the liquid okay apparent change in the volume of the liquid or what liquid overflow liquid okay overflow liquid amount of liquid in the outside container this is equal to what okay this minus this so i am going to write this v naught into 1 plus gamma of liquid delta theta minus v naught into 1 plus gamma of vessel delta theta clear now we will expand v naught plus v naught gamma delta theta minus v naught minus v naught gamma l uh -uh, v uh, v delta theta this v naught v naught can be cancelled out v naught v naught can be cancelled out and what also can be done delta v apparent of the liquid is equal to so this v naught delta theta we can take outside v naught delta theta if we take outside this is nothing but the coefficient of coefficient of uh, volumetric expansion of liquid okay i am writing r just for our understanding okay clear minus the coefficient of volumetric expansion of vessel this is what is the apparent change in volume or volume of the volume of liquid outside or overflow clear okay so this is important Okay, please note it down. Okay, pause the screen and note it down. Okay, so I am erasing all this. Now we will keep that and this. okay so already we have seen uh, change in length uh, change in length or change in volume generally in the general equation just uh, v is equal to v naught into 1 plus gamma delta theta v is equal to v naught plus v naught gamma delta theta we used to write now if we bring it this side v minus v naught is equal to v naught gamma delta theta 
so what is this this is actually change in volume so v naught gamma delta theta okay so this side this left hand side if we write in this form if we write in this form so apparent change in the apparent change in the volume of the liquid will be equal to what v naught v naught into gamma gamma of what apparent we can say apparent a coefficient coefficient of apparent change in the volume okay okay so apparent change in the volume of liquid into delta theta into delta theta if you write like this and right hand side already we have derived so this is equal to what v naught delta theta into the uh, apparent uh, the coefficient of coefficient of volumetric expansion of the liquid minus coefficient of volumetric expansion of vessel we can write like this we can write like this so this v naught delta theta v naught delta theta if we cancel we can write the apparent the coefficient of apparent change in the volume of liquid the coefficient of apparent change in the volume of the liquid is equal to the coefficient of uh, volumetric change of the liquid minus that of the vessel okay this relation is also important okay clear so this is the volume of the water that is going to going outside the vessel and the real change in the volume okay everything we can get from this by taking by properly applying the formula in all these things clear the real change in the volume of liquid is easy v naught into 1 plus gamma delta theta that of the vessel is v naught into 1 plus gamma of v delta theta okay only when it comes to apparent we will have to subtract the total volume of the liquid minus the total volume of the vessel so that time the difference will be that smaller container outside which is used to collect the water okay or simply the water we have collected outside clear okay so uh, see suppose uh, if the uh, uh, liquid has gone outside if the liquid has gone outside then obviously if the liquid has gone outside obviously this value must be greater than this one okay so we can say delta v or uh, this uh, uh, yeah okay that is also fine delta v apparent delta v apparent is positive okay or delta v apparent can be zero or delta v apparent can be negative also okay positive means what happened it has gone outside water has gone outside the main container we can say that uh, this one or even this one is greater than the other so we can say uh, coefficient of uh, expansion of liquid is greater than coefficient of expansion of volume okay so if they are greater okay if this is greater than this one obviously this will go outside if they are equal equal then there won't be anything outside same expansion for both if coefficient of expansion of liquid is less than the coefficient of expansion of volume obviously the uh, level of the water will come down okay so at uh, if based on the application of heat if we apply this heat for long time for long time obviously this will happen intermediate moderate time in the middle this will happen and after some time this will happen in the beginning this is what the situation is in the beginning what will happen the vessel will expand more and obviously this is going to be negative okay hope you understood this uh, concept okay so note it down okay students so it all depends on the 
the time duration of heat if we apply heat for a long time then water or liquid will expand more and it will go outside so based on the question we will have to deal this okay so this is about the thermal expansion of liquid okay thermal expansion of liquid a typical type a type of problem which involves vessel water and all now we will see um, anomalous expansion of water and a triple point also okay we will see now